renewed your quest. From our intention well expressed, you cannot turn us. The state of your connubial views towards the person you accuse does not concern us. Oh, he's going to marry a young woman. Your anger for Mary before will be merry. I think you had better succumb and join our expressions of me. On this subject, I pray you'll be dumb. Dum, dum. You'll find there are many who went for a penny. The word for your guides is long. My, my. There's lots of good fish in the sea. On this subject, we pray you'll be dumb. Dum, dum. We think you had better succumb. Dum, dum. You'll find there are many who went for a penny. Who went for a penny. Dum, dum. The word's a good fish in the sea. There are lots of good fish in the sea. There's lots of good fish, good fish in the sea. There's lots of good fish.
looked in wonder, in my artless Japanese way. Why is it that I am so much more attractive than anyone else in the whole world? Oh, can this be vanity? No. Nature is lovely and rejoices in her loveliness. I am a child of nature and I take after my mother. <laughs> The sun whose rays are all ablaze with ever living glory does not deny his majesty, he scorns to tell a story. Peter exclaim, I blush for shame, seek I may be indulgent. But fierce and bold in fiery gold, he glories all. by this sort of thing. A month? Well, what's a month? Bah, these divisions of time are purely arbitrary. Who says 24 hours make a day? There's a popular impression to that effect. And then we'll face it. We'll call each second a minute, each minute an hour, each hour a day, and each day a year. 
At that rate, we've about 30 years of married happiness before us. At that rate, this interview has lasted four hours and three quarters. Yes. Oh, time flies when one is thoroughly enjoying oneself. That's the way to look at it. Don't let's be downhearted. There's a silver lining to every cloud. Yes, let's be perfectly happy. Yes, let's, let's thoroughly enjoy ourselves. It's, it's absurd to cry. <laughs> Quite ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Distressing you. Never mind. I must get used to it. Only please, do it by degrees. Begin by putting your arm around her waist. Uh, there, let me get used to that first. Oh, wouldn't you like to retire? It must pain you to see us so affectionate together. No, I must learn to bear it. 
Now oblige me by allowing her head to rest upon your shoulder. Like that? <laughs> Thank you, I'm much obliged. Now kiss her. Thank you, it's simple torture. <laughs> come, come, bed up. After all, it's only for a month. No, no, it's no use deluding oneself with false hopes. What, what do, you do you mean? mean? My child, my poor child. How shall I break it to her? My little bride who was to have been. Was to have been? Yes, you never can be mine. Oh, what? So <laughs> <laughs> I just ascertained that by the Mikado's law, when a married man is beheaded, his wife is buried alive. <laughs> buried alive. Yes, buried alive. It's a most unpleasant death. But whom did you get that from? From Pooba. He's my solicitor. But he may have been mistaken. So I thought. So I consulted the Attorney General, the Lord Chief Justice, <laughs> Master of the Rolls, Judge Ordinary, and the Lord Chancellor. They're all of the same opinion. <laughs> Never knew such unanimity on a point of law in my life. <laughs> but stop a bit. This law has never been put in force. Oh, not yet. You see, flirting is the only crime punishable by decapitation. And married men never flirt. <laughs> of course they don't. I quite forgot. Well, I suppose I may take it that my dream of happiness is at an end. Mm, darling, I don't want to appear selfish. And I love you with all my heart. I don't suppose I shall ever love anyone else half as much. But when I agreed to marry you, my own, well, you see, I had no idea that, that I should have to be buried alive in a month. Nor I. It's the very first I've heard of it. It makes a difference, doesn't it? <laughs> It does make a difference, of course. You see, well, burial alive, it's such a stuffy death. I, I call it a beast of a death. You see my difficulty, don't you? Yes, and I see my own. If I insist on your carrying out your promise, I doom you to a hideous death. If I release you, you marry Coco at once. Here's a how we do If I marry you When your time to come to perish Then the maiden whom you cherish Must be slaughtered too Here's a how we do Here's a how we do Here's a pretty mess In a month or less I must die without a wedding Let the bitter tears I'm shedding Witness my distress Here's a pretty mess Here's a pretty mess His state of things to her life she clings. Matrimonial devotion doesn't seem to suit her notion. Burial it brings. Here's a state of things. Here's a state of things. With the passion and intense, I wish a man the door. But the laws of common sense we ought to ignore. If what I say is true, tis death to marry you. Here's a pretty state of things. Here's a pretty how we do. Here's a pretty state of things. A pretty state of things. Here's a Here's a how we do. Pretty howdy-do. My poor boy, I'm really very sorry for you. Thanks, old fellow. I'm sure you are. You see, I'm quite helpless. I quite see that. I can't conceive anything more distressing than having one's marriage broken off at the last moment. But you shan't be disappointed of a wedding. You shall come to mine. That's awfully kind of you, but that's impossible. Why so? Today I die. 
What do you mean? I can't live without Yum Yum. Today, I perform the happy dispatch. <gasps> no, no, pardon me. I can't permit that. Why not? Why, hang it all. You're under contract to die at the hand of the public executioner in a month's time. If you kill yourself, what's to become of me? Why, I should have to be executed in your place. It would certainly seem so. Now then, Lord Mayor, what is it? The Mikado and his suite are approaching the city and will be here in ten minutes. The Mikado, he's coming to ascertain whether I've obeyed his decree. Now look here, you know, this is getting serious. A bargain's a bargain, and you mustn't frustrate the ends of justice by committing suicide. As a man of honor and a gentleman, you are bound to die ignominiously at the hand of the public executioner. Very well, then. Behead me. What? Now? Certainly at once. <laughs> jump it off! Jump it off! My good sir, I don't go about prepared to execute gentlemen at a moment's notice. Why, I never even killed a blue bottle. Still is Lord High Executioner. My good sir, as Lord High Executioner, I've got to behead him in a month. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> I don't know how it's done. I mean to take lessons. I plan to begin with the guinea pig and work my way through the animal kingdom until I come to a second trombone. <laughs> Why, you don't suppose that as a humane man, I'd have accepted the post of Lord High Executioner if I hadn't thought the duties purely nominal. I can't kill you. I can't kill anything. I can't kill anybody. Oh, no. Oh, come, my poor fellow. We all have unpleasant duties to discharge at times. After all, what is it? If I don't mind, why should you? Remember, sooner or later, it must be done. Must it? I'm not so sure about that. What do you mean? Why should I behead you when making an affidavit that you've been executed will do just as well? Here are plenty of witnesses. The Lord Chief Justice, the Lord High Admiral, <laughs> Commander-in-Chief, Secretary of State for the Home Department, First Lord of the Treasury, and the Chief Commissioner of Police. But where are they? There they are. They'll all swear to it, won't you? Am I to understand that all of us high officers of state are required to perjure ourselves in order to ensure your safety? Why not? You'll be grossly insulted as usual. Will the insult be cashed down or at a date? It will be a ready-money transaction. Well, it will be a useful discipline. Very good. Choose your fiction, and I'll endorse it. Nobody <laughs> like that for me, Prime. But I tell you that life without Yum Yum... Oh, Yum Yum, Yum Yum! Bother Yum Yum! Here, Commissioner, go and fetch Yum Yum and bring her here. Take Yum Yum and marry Yum Yum. Only go away and never come back again. Here she comes. Yum Yum, are you particularly busy? Oh no, not particularly. You five minutes to spare? Yes. Well, go along with His Grace, the Archbishop of Titipu, and he'll marry you at once. What if I'm to be buried alive? Now don't ask questions, but do as I say, and Nanky Poo will explain all. But one moment. Not the world. Here comes the Mikado. No doubt to ascertain whether I've obeyed his decree. And if he finds you alive, I shall have the greatest difficulty in persuading him I've beheaded to. Close thing that, for here he comes! Whoa.
from every kind of man, obedience I expect. I'm the Emperor of Japan. And I'm his daughter-in-law elect. He'll marry his son. He's only got one to his daughter-in-law elect. My morals have been declared particularly correct. But they're nothing at all compared with those of his daughter-in-law elect. Bow, bow to his daughter-in-law elect. Bow, bow to his daughter-in-law kind of way I govern each tribe and sect. I'll cheerfully own my sway. Except his daughter-in-law elect. As tough as a bone with a will of her own is his daughter-in-law elect. My nature is love and light, my freedom from all defect. Is insignificant quite compared with his daughter-in-law elect. Bow, bow to his daughter-in-law elect. Humane Mikado never did in Japan exist. To nobody second, I'm certainly reckoned a true philanthropist. It is my very humane endeavor to make to some extent each evil lever a running river of harmless merriment. My object all sublime, I shall achieve in time. To let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime. And make each prisoner pent, unwillingly represent a source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. All prosy dull society sinners who chatter and bleat and bore are sent to hear sermons from mystical Germans who preach from ten to four. The amateur tenor whose vocal villainies all desire to shock shall during half hours exhibit his powers to Madame Tussauds' wax work. The porky employer harassing his staffers with leers and throats and threats. No lawsuit can scare him from his private harem. So this is what he gets. He's dumped after dark in the animal park where the lady gorilla croons to enjoy the gapes of the amorous apes and the charms of the ardent baboons. <laughs> My object all sublime, I shall achieve in time To let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime